Welcome to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adult ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. The hunter type in you is listening to that and it makes you want to get up and get out and get in nature, then my goal is achieved with today's selection of music to bring us into a preview of what you're going to hear today on the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Our focus today is exercise, part one of three of chapter nine of the transformational guide to adult ADD, ADHD, what we refer to for those of you just joining us as hunter types. And so I figured to start out today with a little nature-influenced uh, music and instrumental, hopefully that makes you want to get up and go, because you're going to hear a lot today in my conversation with the author of The Drummer in the Great Mountain, Michael Ferguson. You're going to hear references over and over to getting out in nature and combining that with exercise. Really, that's a big point that we try to, in this conversation, bring forth, is getting out in nature and coming up with a routine exercise schedule. Remember that physical health affects everything in your life. You can have all the best systems in place, including support, but if you don't take care of your health, it really doesn't matter much. You're going to hear today the reason why, which is also referenced in the book, and that is that for a hunter type, the exercise is one of the pyramids. We're coming off of spiritual spirituality and mindfulness from last week. But exercise is this big, big foundation of that pyramid for hunter types because it affects mood, focus, and concentration. Three things that we have to give ourselves the chance to be at our optimum capacity in mood, focus, and concentration in order to thrive as being a hunter type. And remember, that's the whole goal of the transformational guide. And that's the whole goal of our audio podcast here. It's a companion to the book. And we are able to give you a little more detail and share in stories and uh, hopefully give you another angle as you go through this transformational process. Remember that people with our wiring, again, for those of you that may be new to our podcast community, we refer to as hunter types. It's how we're wired. We don't have the luxury that the rest of the population does in terms of diet, exercise, and supplements. And so that's why over the next three podcasts, we want to give you um, the tools to get there to make you match up to more the farmer type, if you will. Remember that as a hunter type, our daily survival and optimal functioning depends on a solid health schedule. And so that's what these three podcasts are going to be about. Today, we are sitting down, I'm sitting down with Michael uh, on a conversation on exercise. So let me take you without further ado 
to this sit down with Michael Ferguson with a quick reminder as always that we are at drummerandthegreatmountain.com. Click on that Facebook link. Continue to give us your feedbacks on both the book, the podcast. Give us your feedback, uh, what you would like to hear more of, and uh, all the wonderful praise you've given us. Uh, please keep up with that. As always, remember that that is what keeps Michael and I going to be able to give back to you uh, through this audio podcast. So now I take you to a conversation with Michael on exercise on the Drummer on the Great Mountain podcast. Enjoy. Physical health affects everything in your life. The Drummer on the Great Mountain podcast this week will be focusing on physical health and the exercise portion of that. Welcome once again to the audio companion to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, which is a guidebook by Michael Joseph Ferguson, who joins me every week here on this podcast as a service, a way for us to give back so you have an audio companion to go along with the transformational guide that is The Drummer and the Great Mountain. For those of you that are just joining us, this is the audio companion as mentioned and our goal is to delve into and share stories and give you more insight as you follow along in the book. Um, and it's not necessary that you that we require you to listen episode by episode, but it does help. The, the flow does help. We've been getting great feedback from you all out there. So please continue to do so on the drummer and the great mountain.com. Click on that Facebook link in the upper right or Twitter and Give us feedback and continue to give us feedback because it for sure is driving how we form this podcast and really how it's evolved. So with no further ado, as I do every week, I'm going to welcome in the author, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Good morning, my friend. How are you? I am good. Good to be with you today. Indeed. We had a we woke up to a stormy wake up call this morning, a rarity yes. in Southern California. Uh, stormy and thunderous, but I liked it. It got, got me back to nature a little bit, which is something we're definitely going to be talking about today. Yes. So we we've uh, we've kind of gone about this uh, in many different ways. We've worked our way last week with spirituality, or I should say chapter eight, the chapter previous to this was about spirituality and mindfulness. And I almost feel like that preps us, that gets us ready to then transform the hunter type and how we're wired to get all the pros, all the benefits of being a hunter type and that transformational process we go through to get there. And we have kind of always throughout the podcast so far hinted at it and talked a little bit about it. But today is our chance, your chance and mine to tell our audience about exercise, which is our focus of the day. So I'll turn it over to you. Tell us about your health journey and how big of a role exercise played in your, in your transformation. Uh, yes. So I, I, one of the things that motivated me to finally write this book was just one recognizing that there wasn't anything like this out there. And specifically when I was, um, I didn't realize I was had this hunter type ADD ADHD wiring until I was in my early twenties, <laughs> as far as like a diagnosis. But um, what happened was um, I came to so I grew up suburbia America. I ate fast food, and it always felt like I think say growing up from like eight or nine on, I felt like my batteries were very low. I felt like it, like my, my energy was a bit dim. I could get really into things, but I'd say overall with school and with everything else, I felt like I was, it just, it was fuzzy. It just felt fuzzy. Uh, and the only things that came into clarity when life became really crisp is if I was interested in, like I played guitar and was in bands and music really pulled me. So it, like the things I was interested in, like cl the fuzz would clear away and then I could just focus for hours and hours and hours. And so later when I recognized how I was wired, it made perfect sense. Um, but when I was in my early twenties, um, I was overweight. I was like, I don't know, 60 pounds overweight, something like that. And um, I just, on my own, after finding out that I had somewhat of a health scare, that I, I was starting to get help, heart palpitations, and it turned out it was the caffeine from drinking sodas, uh, that I, I just dove into changing my diet. I eliminated all the fast food. And then the other key piece that I did, and what we're going to talk about today, is I started going to the beach every day after work, and I ran... 
uh, I started jogging for, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, you know, close to sunset. And that ju- that changed my life. Um, w- within the span of a couple months, I had lost 50 pounds and I was feeling super clear, far more productive. And, um, and we're going to focus on the exercise piece of this today, uh, not necessarily the nutrition piece. But And then it was later that as I was start actually pulling together the book and piecing everything together, that was the one piece that uh, in terms of what we'd spoken about before about dopamine and, and just what we are low in, um, it counterbalanced that. And so throughout my life now, it's like exercise three times a week is essential. Like if I ma- I'm making a living I'm, uh, with my art and what I create uh, primarily, and if I don't exercise, I, I don't function. And then company goes down, everything goes down. So um, we're going to talk specifically today about just what the role of exercise does in, in terms of uh, a key support mechanism for hunter types and ADD, ADHD, how it, how that role, um, how does that affect, you know, your overall life and all the other challenges that show up? And then also how do you create a system by which you can maintain it, which is the key piece because people can, especially hunter types can burn on something. And then, you know, as soon as they slip up, they're like, ah, I slipped up and that's it. And then they just give up. And that pattern is over and over and over again with every, all the clients I work with, almost all of them have had that pattern of like, oh, you know, they, they can lose the weight or they can get an exercise routine going, but maintaining it, that is the key piece. And I think there's going to be some key pieces that we will discuss today that may make that process of creating a habit a bit easier. I feel like as you were describing that last part, I feel like you were uh, writing my autobiography, at least when it comes to, uh, yeah, the, the old story, and it doesn't have to be a hunter type, but I know up to when I actually started for real taking care of my health in the last couple of years and really getting serious about it recently due to a health scare, due to turning 40, and, and, and at the same time going through this process of transforming the hunter type that I didn't realize how many times I had gotten on the wagon, off the wagon, how many times. I only, I guess I really thought it was only a couple of times, but I probably every year would go through something that I thought was the answer towards optimum health and keeping weight off, but then it, it, it wouldn't even be a month or two after like reaching a success point, funny enough, that I look back and was like, wow, look at that pattern. Then I got overweight again and then it seemed like the year after that again there was some other fad that I jumped onto, and I and I and I do remember feeling at the time that that was it for me and it, long story short now that I'm actually doing it and and having kept it up for the longest time I've ever done in my life and I feel like it's for real this time I look back and see that that is part of that um, that 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 domino effect of being a hunter type is that mm-hmm. you you also hyper focus and jump on things and uh you don't really look at things as being as you're not used to you haven't built the habit of being a long distance runner hunters are sprinters so we sprint yeah but then we burn out and like you said it almost sounds like to me correct me if i'm wrong i I know this is the story for me but have you found with with those that you've worked with that for you it was running and that's almost part of the trick is that it may take you to find a while that thing that running at sunset yes i could never do Right. Like that's just not my thing. I have bad knees. I just that it doesn't matter if it's the most beautiful sunset that didn't work for me. Swimming has worked for me. So is that part of the key is to kind of like almost research, try different things. So you find that thing that you can stay with. Definitely. And that's what we will definitely cover that today, because I think that's one of the essentials is you have to have the the exercise routine has to be engaging for you in other ways besides just physical exercise. It can't be a have to. So if, if it's sitting in the realm of have to or just I'm going to accomplish this goal, then you haven't gone far enough. Uh, and for me, uh, jogging at the beach is also it's beautiful. Uh, I have lots of insights that many of the insights that I've gotten, like after a run, I usually run. Um, for about 30 to 40 minutes and then I stop and then I walk back and that walk back is I get so many insights in terms of my life and just things to try out and creative ideas. So 
I think it has to have many different components in order for that to become something that you enjoy doing versus something you have to do. Beautiful. Yeah. I, and that's, I, and I, and it's f- funny, you just probably summarized better than I did possibly why for me it failed in the past because those definitely were all have to things. It was almost yeah. like I wasn't inspired for me. I was inspired because this is the, what I have to do. And it's different. I guess it's your, it's your motivations. And another thing you've mentioned a few times now, I do want to remind folks out there that a lot of what we cover, Michael and I are both creative spirits in our in our other walks of life both musicians very very artistic view of the world creative output um view of the world which michael's now mentioned a couple times i want to give a quick share about how much working on transforming as a hunter type and that first huge piece well right on top of spirituality mindful all the tools we've mentioned so far but it wasn't until exercise became regular till i found for me again swimming uh, regular three times a week, uh, challenging myself with how far I swim in an amount of time. It yeah. wasn't until I hit this point in my life and in this transformational process that I saw the huge b- benefits in creativity. So th- I know that's that's a lot of our audience too because you mentioned mm-hmm. it in the book. Boy, it, it's, it is. So if you want any other motivation for this, for you creative types out there that are listening, yes. believe yeah. us. That you yeah. will come back to your instrument, to your paintbrush, whatever it may be, to your pen if you're an author. You yeah. are going to come back with so much more, aren't you? Uh, so see, that's it. And 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 I think the the thing is that we, the natural, the, the if you're a creative person, and a lot of hunters, most hunter types that I've worked with have very strong creative energy then it's it's not necessarily that it makes you more creative it, it your ability to then take that creativity and put it into a form that gets out to people and you can potentially successfully make a living doing it that's the key so it, it's it, it's only going to help and in in i'm sure uh one of the key pieces that I see with almost everyone that I know that I, that is, I would consider successful in terms of their ability to maintain a certain lifestyle that they enjoy and freedom. It's, it's exercise is always a component. So it, if you are in, so what I want to talk about today and what we can discuss is just, it's a lot of it's what keeps us from doing it because almost everyone wants to exercise regularly, but it's getting past some of the blocks it's getting past uh the lethargy if you're in a space where you've not been moving too much up to this point or it's adjusting your current exercise routine so that it can be more um enjoyable and sustainable and if you're going to do that talk to us about the benefits then of the natural approach which is how you approach everything in this in this in this guidebook but let's now focus on exercise and the natural approach and, and tell us a little bit about that yeah, I mean, so I think this is really important. So as we've been doing the podcast and I've been talking to people and actually recently talked to a, a counselor on um, as they were re- reviewing the, the book and sharing it with people, um, I think it's key to remember that I, I, ADD, ADHD, this wiring has been around for as long as we've all been around. So it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. This is nothing new. What is new is that people are exercising less and they're eating a crappy diet. And there's specifically, um, and and we're trying to interface into a world that is, may not be wired. uh, It may not be the same. We have a harder time engaging with the world as it is now in terms of finances and all these abstract things that aren't, aren't about kind of a direct interface with accessing your food and shelter. These are things that are very abstract now. And so this is why I think ADD, ADHD as a, um, as a diagnosis has gone way up, but the, the wiring, the genetics of it have been the same for thousands and thousands of years. And so what we're trying to do here is get to a place where we take the benefits of that wiring and then use it for optimum uh, movement and thriving in this world so that we can think clearly and focus on the things that we want to focus on. So I would say um, poor diet uh, and specifically vitamin deficiencies, things like that can all exasperate 
uh, ADD and especially not lack of exercise. And medication, if you're on medication, no judgment, but the, the issue is medication is not nourishing your body in any way. Mm -hmm. There's no physical nourishment you're getting from medication. Um, so even if you are using it and it's helping you and it's giving you some clarity, great, but you still need to address all these. It, it doesn't do anything else for your physical body. Um, and so what I say is, the natural approach to addressing your ADD, ADHD challenges, and then optimizing yourself as a hunter type should be your first course of action. It should not be the last thing you do. Mm -hmm. It's not like, okay, I'll try the medication. If that doesn't work, I'll do this. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> your physical body needs to be healthy and strong. And if anything, ADD meds can often cover up that. Because you think, well, I don't need to deal with that right now because this is giving me the It's a mask. It's a mask. It's not a solution. And, it's not a solution. And, and, yeah. and, but, but this is also how we are uh, going to get very philosophical here. I don't know if it's Socrates or what. I, my, my philosophy studies are way, way behind me. But I, it's just natural for us as a species, any species, but we can only talk about the experience of being a human, this journey we're on. It's natural for us to say, I have pain. It can be mental pain, physical pain, whatever. Yep. It's become natural for us to say, what can I take immediately for that immediate gratification of making the pain go away? Now, this is hunter types and non-hunter types combined. But especially for hunter type, this is such a dangerous road to go down because it doesn't by by holding off on that immediate gratification and finding the natural holistic approach which you just mentioned by going down the natural holistic approach you're going to find a way to do things that help you last and be able to be in the race for a long time whereas the other one yes it cuts off the pain immediately because that's what we're programmed to but this is where you have to deprogram yourself it didn't used to always be this way right i'm sure we've had tylenol for as long as i can remember but we haven't had all this other stuff all this other yeah. stuff that you're bombarded with just try to take a step back as a hunter type if you're if you're again there's no judgment but if you want to take the holistic approach it's easy enough just before you do that medication route try some of these things try these tools try following this program and then see the benefits so that's my editorial opinion but i just thought that was important it's just it's kind of programmed in us we want to get rid of something quickly but as a hunter type it's so important for you to get to it naturally and and help you sustain through this journey Exactly. And you just have multiple options. If something comes up where the medications aren't working or they're weaning off or they're causing other challenges, um, then you need to have other uh, other pieces in place. I Absolutely. think it just makes sense. Uh, the other piece uh, I would say is that uh, it's a very number of the people that I work with for coaching, that weight loss is, is, it comes up over and over and over again. And this is what we're mapping out here is like the best weight loss program. It's, it's, there's, it's <laughs> almost identical to like three or four books that I've read recently on weight loss in terms of like what you should be eating, how you should be exercising. This is the, the great thing about this is you'll be healthier, you'll be more tone, you'll feel better. And you're going to also possibly transform some sugar addictions, which most of us have. We've been eating refined sugar most of our lives, uh, which, and, and I'm not saying get rid of all sweets. I'm just saying refined sugar. We'll go into that later. Um, and, you know, it's all about just feeling more healthy and more vibrant, more alive, and, and also understanding what you need to do. Like it, it, I think the hard thing is we someone gets an ADD ADHD diagnosis and they go oh okay now what and it's like okay pills are one option but often these other pieces aren't put on the table and so we are doing our best to put the other pieces on the table to go look here's these other things and you can test it out and you can see if it works mm -hmm. and bef since we want to get to we want to get to some of the meat here which is the exercises you talk about uh, in the book and um, uh, finding out what works for you. We want to get into that. But before we get into that, take us there. Tell us how important, and this is going to sound familiar for those of you who have been keeping up with the book and the podcast, because one of the exercises we gave you, the book gives you, is to start journaling, just generally journaling. Yes. But then we've seen how journaling comes into play in each either each subcategory, if you will, of this process. And Michael, you talk about tracking 
and tell us about why tracking is so important as you're starting to find this out and, and get us into some specifics about exercise itself. Yes. Okay. Well, so we're going to go big into tracking at the end of the third pod. Uh, so right now, this is the first one on exercise. We're going to do the next one on nutrition and the one after that will be on supplements and we will also put in tracking there. So tracking is really important because this just proves to you whether it's working or not working. So in general, and then again, it's in the book um, and we will mention some of the page numbers as we go further into the podcasts. Um, what I encourage everyone to do is basically every, for, for 30 days, end of the day, track your mood, focus, focus levels, productivity, and then how did you exercise? What did you eat? Just basically every day, one to five, you know, mood, one to five, focus, like between one and five, how did you do? And then after a month of tracking that, you have a pretty clear map. You can see, well, I did this, I did this, and I did this. And then the next day I was productive or I wasn't productive, or you'll start to see what, what habits work, what habits don't work. And then you'll know, you'll, you'll be able to see within 30 days, if you, you shift it up and try different things, you'll see like, oh, okay, you'll at least get closer to what works. And so specifically going into exercise, then um, this is number one, I'd say number one in nutrition is a very close number two, but I would have to say from personal experience and doing tracking cardio exercise three times a week is I, I feel safe to say probably the number one AD, natural ADD support you can possibly do. Uh, and so let, let's get into it. I think part, part of why I adopted in the book, The Hunter-Farmer Theory, is that the psychological model as a hunter type really fits with the, how you should maybe organize your life to be optimum in terms of your natural and health support. And so if you think about if you were a hunter back in the day, um, you would have big bursts of cardio energy. You'd be going on the hunt, you'd be hyper-focusing, and that would be part of the mechanism that that would be the, you know, that's how you survived. That's how you survived and how you brought food back to your family and to, to the, uh, you know, and how you ate and everything else. So the, the hunt in terms of imagining it, whether you're a vegan or vegetarian like myself, it's just, if you can abstract it and go, this is part of, you know, our DNA history for all of us, hunt, you know, that movement, that run, that kind of car high cardio, um, if you can start replicating that in your life, you you may start to see some big changes in these issues around focus and fuzziness and not being motivated, they start to calm down. You'll be able to, you, you may find you can focus longer and you can motivate yourself easier. And so the reason why that is, and I think going into the, why it's important to talk about the brain chemistry quickly is, as we mentioned over and over again, one of the prime pieces that makes us ADD hunter types, what the genetics of, of who we are is that we have lower levels of dopamine receptors. That is, that seems from my research, that is, there's other pieces, but that I want to focus on that because that seems to be primary. Um, dopamine relates to motivation, focus, and learning. So if you're feeling fuzzy and you're feeling uh, the, the inability to focus on things that are like mundane tasks, more than likely you, you have less dopamine than you need to accomplish that task. And that's part of why you have that experience. And so cardio workouts do amazing things. So if you do a 30 to 40 minute cardio workout, what you're getting is you're getting a, a big release of dopamine through your whole brain. It's a very powerful experience for your brain to experience, to go through that. You're also releasing serotonin, which creates your overall well-being, which we've also talked about, which is the key to uh, chronic depression is low, what's happening there is low serotonin levels. So it helps release serotonin. So you get that, that feeling of overall well-being. You release endorphins, which are natural painkillers and epinephrine, which is also very much needed for high stressful situations. It's like, it's, that's the, the chemical that helps you uh, cope with very stressful situations without just going into overload. So the why exercise is absolutely clear, but I want to be specific. It is not just any exercise. It's specifically cardio, cardio. breathing, yeah. movement, 
And uh, I usually add to this, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is if you can get out into nature, breathing fresh air, outdoor air. Most of us don't get enough of it. We get the stale air that's filtered through, you know, uh, air conditioners and filtration. It's like we're not getting fresh air. And and there's so many other components that I think get removed when we stay, when we're not breathing in fresh air outdoors as much as, especially we did, you know, even a hundred years ago, we're, we're very much in many of us spend a lot of times indoors. So, uh, that's the other piece to the exercise routine I'd like to, to add in. And then we'll, again, we'll talk about that. So tell us about, um, yeah, I mean, you already mentioned, and I like the way it was brought across in the book. You have a subtopic here about secrets held in fresh air. And I, and I love that, that, that got my attention. And, and that's why we keep coming back to the premise of being a hunter type. So again, imagine if you will, being the hunter and being the hunter type, how Michael said, you're on the hunt, those big bursts of cardio, but a hunter didn't go on his hunts in an office. Right. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't right. do it exactly. in, indoors. He did it outdoors. That's why it's important. If you don't happen to be a nature type person, this is, you're going to find it's, it, and, and let me speak personally for a minute. Not at all. At all ever had an interest in camping. Never anything I wanted to do. Unusual in the circle of creative artist type, you know, the tree hugger, if you will. Uh, <laughs> never really, just it just wasn't something that interested me more because I guess I'm, I'm a little lazy when it comes to those things. I'm like, man, I want to go and make the tent, make the thing, and then you have to pack it up. It just, it was almost like a lazy thing. My joke always with my friends uh, and anybody close to my life was like, we can go camping, just I'll be at the hotel and, you know, I'll see you during the day. Then, my my wife came into my life. She is an artist. She is a creative spirit, and she's huge into nature. So that helped for sure to see the light and the benefits of that. But never more than being on this transformational process as a hunter type. And it's interesting because once we committed to once, maybe twice a year, making sure we get a big boost of that by going on a camping weekend with friends or family or whatever it may be. It's made me want to do it more during the week. And so now in my exercise routine, swimming yeah. happens to be my thing. But that's indoor at a lap pool. And that's great because that really does. I can't swim outdoors. It's just I, I don't like swimming outdoors. It doesn't – it distracts me from focusing on the, my timing and the, and the technique I'm using to get through the laps, so on and so forth. But then I make sure – that twice, three times a week, I am taking my son out for a walk. Even if I've worked out that day or what we call the family walks, it's after dinner. It is time for a family walk. We're fortunate enough to live in a place where there's a lot of greenery and trees and we make sure to take the walk within those. And so that's how the secrets in in fresh air uh, subtopic kind of jumped out at me. And that's how I apply it. So I just wanted Fantastic. to emphasize that point. Okay, let's move on and, and get to... Um, how you go about it. You're a hunter type. You've been following the book. You've done the assignment so far. Now you're at this point, which is a sticking point for a lot of folks out there. So tell us how you take people in the book and, and give us a guidance on getting exercise on your schedule. What are some tools and little tricks that you can use to, to get on, to get on this? It, well, yeah. And I think we, we should add here that the, um, when you're thinking about what you want to be doing, um, I think there's, there's some criteria that you, you should go through, which is it's gotta be, it, so if you're experienced, what I encourage people to do is experiment first, try a few different things out, stretch yourself, try things that you've never done before. Um, if you're, you're shooting for what I, I would propose you shoot for, shoot for something you can do regularly. They can, you can turn it into a habit and it's something you're like, I want to go do this. And if you can't get to that, or at least partially, sometimes you got to push yourself a little bit. Um, but if you can't get to the place where like it, it is a, it is associated with a pleasant experience, then you keep, you need to keep experimenting until you find it. Uh, so one, it, it's got to be enjoyable. You should experiment. You should then be able to assess how it's doing, how you're feeling. Is it, is it contributing to you? Are you feeling good after you're not you know, wearing yourself out or having so much physical pain from it that it's it's actually causing problems. You have to look at that. And then, of course, making it into a habit. Um, so in terms of, of 
making it into a habit, I think part of it is um, picking times during the week that work well. So if you have to drag yourself there at the end of a very long day, then you may want to start thinking about, well, do you do it in the morning? Or does it feel really good for you to do it after work? A lot of people, that's that works for them. Or if they can get out during their work day, mid to late afternoon, that's great too. Um, and then also opening things up for the weekend so you have some space there to, to look at that and see if, uh, see if the weekend is um, – a good way to go. Again, what I, what I would suggest is at least three times a week, 30 to 40 minutes. And if you're starting from a place of you haven't been exercising much, then start just by going for walks. Everyone can walk, get out, get outside, go for a walk, get into nature. If you, there's a park or some pl- like or lake or something, or you've got the ocean nearby, there's something. I don't care how suburb, how urban your environment, somewhere there's some nature. Try to get out in nature and at least move around. Start there, associate it with a positive experience. That's the first stage if in I building could, it into a habit. If I could, just a note on that, a personal experience. For the 20th time when I got out of shape uh, late last year, mid last year, and then really started to refocus and stay consistent since then that is exactly the advice I took to heart from this process in this book I said let's take the excuses out oh well I'm out of shape so I can't go running jogging is out that's not I can't do this I can't found myself saying I can't a lot but now having a process like this to follow and frankly uh, a wife who kicked my butt <laughs> out the door and said go walk there's no ex- and that's the point and you're then gonna look back on those times and be like wow i can't believe that i was actually holding myself back with all the excuses that i can't even walk you can you really can if you're blessed enough to have everything in order just to be able to walk go use it it's a starting point if you're a hunter type mixed with being an aquarius if you're into the signs like <laughs> me you, I found the, the reason I'd held myself off from even walking was like, well, that's not enough. What's that going to do? Believe me, it does something, especially if you're at least challenging yourself a little bit to say, I'm going to go around my block in this for the first week. Oh, I'm going to go around the block and then I'm going to go to that other neighborhood and, and see how if you start to walk fast with a, with a, with a pace, with a hunter pace, if you will, yeah. Believe me, it's doing something. It's called doing yeah. something better than nothing sitting on your couch or on your bed. So I just yeah. I wanted to emphasize that. That's you know what? At a brisk walk with uh, focusing on on breathing deeper, which most of us don't do, is you take some breaths, you get out, you move. I mean, that's enough. Yes. That's enough to get you going. Yep. Um, I think we should go through that list. So there's a list on page yep. two ten in the book. If you're trying, we're almost we're hitting everything in this first chapter, in this first part of this this chapter. So I mean, we we're covering almost. Yeah. All so of tell it. us about cardio workout ideas. We mentioned walking, but you know, tell us about other ones. And um, I love also your concept of um, exercising with others. So so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, and we got, we definitely got to talk about that. Yeah, and so this is by no means a complete list. So this is just to get your brain going in terms of ideas that you can think about and explore. Uh, so cardio workout ideas are jogging and running is – it's pretty high on, on my list, so I like it. So you can find it. You can go to the beach. You can go to, by a lake. You can go to the local park. I encourage, if you can, to get outdoors. You're going to feel a lot better. I just it. And so before, I was actually looking through the book because um, I some of this, you know, I wrote this quite a while ago. So I was looking back, and there's actually a study that was done by uh, the U- University of Essex uh, a while back that that came to the conclusion that when you exercise outdoors, it actually scientifically has been proven to boost mood more effectively than exercising indoors. So there is actually science behind it. So ideas to explore would be, you know, running or jogging if you can, if that works for you. Um, I just, there it is. I lost my page. I have my list in front of me. Um, hiking, is excellent if you got a place nearby that you can go for a hike and enjoy it and it feels good it's a scenic area that's another great great thing again think in terms of repetitive if you can get to it's not so far away that you can't do it 
um, on a regular basis. I will say though that I drove like my exercise routine started with me driving at least 35 minutes to the beach every day. So, you know, if you can do it, do it. Um, and if, if it means going a little further to get to a place that you really enjoy and you can make that work as a habit, you know, by all means do it. So it doesn't have to necessarily be 10 minutes away. Um, trampoline, a lot of people love the trampoline, get a mini trampoline, re they call it rebounding. Tennis, especially if you can do it with, again, with, with someone else. We'll talk about that in a second. T tennis is great. Racquetball, uh, join a softball league locally. Adult soft softball leagues are all over the place. Definitely something to think about. Um, I know people that just love doing that. That's like their the peak of their week is going in and playing softball. Uh, swimming, you mentioned, love swimming. Uh, you know, what else to say? Indoor, outdoor, um, gyms, it's it's available. Uh, for And again, we're very male-centric. So for, and men may do this too, but at hooping is definitely big. Like my, I know my fiance loves doing hooping. Um, that's hula hooping. This is very California. I don't think it's big <laughs> in other places. There, uh, there's somebody in Montana of... listening right now going, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Hooping. It's big in, I will say, at least I know it's big in California. And it's really turned into a thing. It's very connected to like the Bernie Man yes, crew. And, yes. And, but, um, but I do want to, I do want you to hit, hit on something as we're kind of starting to wind down. I think it's important since we're on the topic. <coughs> Excuse me. Tell us about exercising for those. I, I made a, made a joke there, but this actually could apply. There are some people both reading your book and 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 listening to this uh, from a cold environment. If it's not cold most of the time, it's cold enough for a, a season and they're saying, this has actually been my problem why I can't stay consistent. What am I supposed to do when there's snow and ice on the ground? So give us a little bit about that because I think it's a good time to get into that. Yes, thank you. Uh, and Yes. Yeah, so I would say with, with uh, exercising cold climates, it, this is a big thing. It's like you can exercise during the summer, but in the winter, you, it's it's more challenging. For some people, it isn't. But, you know, the things to think about is even just as simple as like doing j jumping jacks in the morning is uh, something you can do. If you can't get out, if it's just freezing cold, then the gym is always an option and plan ahead. So if you know that your exercise routine takes a big dive once you hit November, December, then get the gym membership set up early. Um, look at some indoor sports. Again, racquetball is, is a possibility. Basketball, things that, that you can do indoors that you can at least keep your exercise routine going. And maybe you have a winter routine and a summer routine. Uh, but again, try to see if you can get that into a habit versus just something you do uh, in general. So putting it on the schedule. Sounds good. I mean, these are tools. We're just what we're getting into here are tools on this big umbrella of exercise and trying to give you ways, as the book does, so that you can be the most successful you've been and most importantly for hunter type staying consistent so let me just summarize a little bit getting out in nature is critical 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 now michael has mentioned something so far that allow a combination of things specifically what i'm talking about is getting your exercise actually outdoors so now you're combining two things you've gotten out in nature which is just something the hunter type needs exercise or not but if you can combine exercise with being outdoors you just hit the jackpot so th those are important yeah. remember to breathe does this sound familiar for those of you that listen to us on chapter eight or, or maybe right now reading chapter eight a lot about the breath and this is critical during exercise whether it's walking whether it's running whether it's swimming it doesn't matter the breathing part brings you back so now you're using the tool yeah. from the mindfulness chapter Damn. Take those deep breaths. It'll it'll check you in. It'll make it. I realize when I do this during my exercise of choice, which is swimming, but also some fast-paced walking on the off days, I have noticed, gotten to a point where I'm conscious enough that I'm realize when I'm not breathing, and as soon as I get back to the breathing, it all comes back to why I'm actually doing this. Now, pictures of family come to mind, health, everything. 
And then it's like you've just given yourself a little recharge to keep going. Um, these are little tricks. The, the breathing is, is critical. We just talked about, for those of you that are listening to us reading this book from Cold Climates, there is a way. You might not be able to do it as often. Maybe in the, in the wintertime, your exercise routine goes from four times a week to three or something like that because maybe there's, you just can't get out. But you can always get do something in the home or on those days when there's not ice in the ground, you can get to the gym because it's just too cold to go walking outside. There is a way. And remember then, you can go to the gym and get on a treadmill and do that same fast-paced walking. So remember, if you start to find yourself making, for lack of a better term, and I'm speaking very personally here, I'm not judging, making excuses, just come back to this chapter, come back to this book. There are ways for you to, to get through. Excellent. What very well put. Yeah, you put all the pieces together. That's excellent. And just a couple other pieces to wrap sure. up. Exercising with others. If you find yourself not being able to accomplish anything, this is kind of one of the the prime rules I do with coaching. Is if you, if two or three sessions go by and, and, and an item hasn't been done schedule it with someone else. That is the trick. So specifically with exercising, you've got people in your life that need to exercise, that want to exercise, that need an excuse like you do to do it. If you can't get it into a habit, then schedule it with someone else and just default to that. So if you find that you you, you get inspired by this and you try to, try to get your exercise routine going again, you keep faltering, then just schedule it with someone else, put it on the calendar. It'll make you accountable and then everything else still applies make it enjoyable make it something that you can you can um, get yourself inspired to do and actually look forward to as you're you're going through your week and starting slow and building up you don't just burn from the from minute one ease into whatever the routine is uh the other thing i would say is in terms of i want to mention yoga uh yoga is absolutely fantastic i've been doing yoga since oh geez almost 20 years now so um I can't say enough about it. And I also, so it's for concentration. I want to specifically mention restorative yoga, which is uh, something my fiance teaches and I go to her classes all the time. And if you want to unwind and you find yourself very wired and really in your head and you, and it's even meditation just doesn't seem to work, try restorative yoga, look at, look up some yoga classes nearby. It, it's, just about everywhere. It is one of the most powerful meditative experiences I've ever, it's like physical body. It's simple. It's not strenuous at all. And if you, it's a good doorway in, it is not a replacement for cardio though. So if you're doing yoga, yoga is added to your exercise routine, but I would say it is not in and of itself, as much as I love yoga, it's not enough for, for at least from my personal experience as a hunter type to get the cardio. So Yoga should be in addition to other things, and I highly recommend it. Um, and the last piece would be um, life coaching support. We're going to go into this in, in later podcasts. If you can establish either with a life coach or with a person that you check in with regularly, um, support in maintaining your um, your exercise routine. It's helpful to have some kind of a regular accountability practice where you say, okay, here's what I, I exercised three times this week, or ex I didn't, and here's why I, I couldn't do it. Here's why I couldn't motivate. Um, essential. For 100 Types, life coaching is so helpful. And again, we will go into, and it's in the book. Uh, I think it's chapter 12. Uh, the whole, my whole coaching system is in there. So you can actually use it with, uh, with someone else you know that you guys can get together and do a co-coaching routine. Uh, that's very, very helpful in terms of sustaining a uh, regular exercise program. And it's program. huge. I, I do want to emphasize, I'm so happy you mentioned that with this book, you get what Michael does with his clients, which is his life coaching technique. It's in there when you get the book. And the reason it's in there is is, is such a critical service. We mentioned it before. I just want to tail, tail this by saying it doesn't have to be someone you necessarily pay if that's not something you can do, use the book, use the life coaching chapter, which we'll get into, but we're mentioning it now. Why? The accountability is huge for a hunter type. That's also something I didn't have before that I have now. I have a life coach, but I also have 
my wife who's using these chapters in the life mm-hmm. coaching to keep me accountable. And I do. And I have several people. I have a very good friend also that every once in a while, one of my guitarist friends also checks in on me, even if it's just the text of how's the exercise routine this week. And I'm very honest with all these people, which is critical. Find the people. Yes. If you can't do the official yes. life coaching Make sure the people that you're having stand in as your uh, life coach, uh, surrogate life coach, if you will, make yeah. sure they're people who can be honest with you because this is the yeah. only way you're going to stay consistent. The accountability, I can't tell you what it does. You don't want to disappoint others. You really don't. And not in a yeah. judgmental way. You just want to report back with the exciting stuff of, I achieved 40 laps this week. I did this. Yeah. Hey, I took an extra walk. I went on a hike. Whatever it may be. So I, I just had to personally rec- uh, say thank you for including that in the book so that if someone can't officially afford a life coach, they can just use that uh, with someone who's going to hold them accountable. Fantastic. Excellent. A full Love plate. It. A full plate once again. Yes. Uh, this is the Drummer in the Great Mountain audio podcast. Today we've done exercise. Stay tuned for the next two parts. We are splitting chapter nine into three parts. Uh, Upcoming next is going to be diet, something Michael and I can both in different ways tell you about our successes, all the trips we made to get to our success point, how many times we tripped and how we tripped. We'll be getting into that. And finally, supplements. So it's all coming up. Um, Michael, any should we give a a, a, um, homework assignment? Yes, let's do that. Good call. Yeah, let's. Yeah, you know, let's try. So, if you got the book, it's two twelve, uh, building an exercise routine. That yes. is the assignment. Briefly, what you're going to be doing is you're going to write, start by writing out a list of exercise ideas that you that have worked in the past or you've enjoyed doing or you'd like to explore, and then try one of them out per week. So basically, make a list and then at least try one a week for the next say month or next three weeks, just try some, just explore, make a list and then start exploring them and put it on your calendar. So once again, write a list of some exercise ideas, you know, and you can use some of the ones that we mentioned or, or you're just come up with some ideas, talk to some people, write a list out, pick some days and times that work for you as far as possible times to exercise that work well on your schedule and then get your phone out, put it in, on your event calendar, put a reminder on it so that it pops up maybe that morning so that you know that, okay, now I'm going to go to NX, try a few out. If you're, if you don't have one already, if you have one already, then you're just going to be dialing in what you're already doing. But if you don't start exploring that, and I'd say that would be the, the uh, exercise for the, for this podcast. Excellent. Thank you, my friend. Once again, Reminder, drummerandthegreatmountain.com is where you can find us. Give us feedback. Click on that Facebook and social media links in the upper right with the feedback we've been getting. We tell you every week because it's true because we keep getting more feedback week by week on what we're doing here, how it's helping you. And um, Michael and I both uh, communicate with you every week how much it means to us because it keeps us going. And it's good to know that this this is of service to folks out there. So drummerandthegreatmountain.com. And there's more to come. Upcoming is diet and supplements as we'll be exploring more on chapter nine. Once again, my good friend, thank you for your time. Thank you for this book and uh, look forward to continuing the journey with you next time. Uh, Thank you so much. Thanks for all that you're doing. Really appreciate it. All the best to you, my friend. We will see you again for part two of chapter nine on diet next time on Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. And until then, please take care of yourselves and your health. Be well.
Thanks for tuning in. This podcast is intended solely for the purpose of personal growth and not as a replacement for professional psychological support. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests of this show are not meant to be taken as medical advice. It is very important to seek the help of a qualified medical practitioner when making any shifts to psychiatric medication you may be taking or if you are experiencing extreme psychological distress.